So are you looking for a bit of a plant that looks slightly prehistoric and that it could have been around during the time of the dinosaurs? It's got that kind of scaly effect. Stick around and I'll show you an anthurium that's super cool. Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is going to be a continuation of the plant review series and I've got a truly special anthurium to look at today. Today I'm going to be reviewing the anthurium luxuriance. And this is definitely a plant that at least up until recently I think was quite coveted. There was a lot of people that wanted to get their hands on the anthurium luxuriance. But before we get into the review itself, let's lay down some ground rules. So if you're one of the regulars and you're coming back, welcome back, it's nice to have you. By this point you know the deal, if you want to jump to a specific chapter you can do down below. If you are new, however, the ground rules are predominantly going to be for you, pretty much because everybody else has already heard them quite a few times by now. But essentially what they are is that I cannot make these reviews unbiased. They are my biased opinion, in my specific conditions with my specific plant and my specific conditions is whilst I'm getting glared at and blown out by the sun in a conservatory in the UK and whatever that might mean in terms of humidity, light, cold, heat, all of the above. Now obviously this might be different from what you've got in your conditions so always try to keep that in mind and if you do have this specific plant in your care and you've had it for a while and you want to share your own experiences as to what it's been like growing this plant, any pests, any kind of issues with speed of growth, propagations, do drop them down below in the comments. What I'm hoping that these videos will become is essentially a repository of information where people can dive into and figure out ah oh, you know what these people have had it for a few months, a few years, this is what they've experienced and people can go knowingly into a certain plant's ownership whilst getting some tips from everybody else that's been growing it for a while. But without further ado, let's dive into the first topic, shall we? Okay, so this is definitely going to be one of those videos where I'm going to be holding up a plant for a while just so I can kind of bring it in and show it to you. But let's look at background with this plant. So the background with this plant is this is almost a year old. On the title I'll have it as a year just purely because it's only like a couple of weeks off being a year old. And this I picked up from Grow Tropicals when I went up to their rare plant event up in Leeds last summer. I have done a video when I was on a panel as well and I will add it at the top there. But this was a plant that I was looking at for a long time and it was a decent price when I found it. I'm touch about availability and price in just a moment. But let me put a picture here so you can see what it looked like. And yeah, I just ended up picking this up from that event. The event was great, great fun. I picked this up and I picked two other plants up. One which is no longer with me, which has since been replaced, which was for the people that have been around for a while, they'll know that I picked up a very small kind of rooting cutting of a philodendron serpents, which RIP, that is no longer with us. That kind of struggled from day one. So that was my bad though, to be fair, because I think they did mention to me that it's quite freshly rooting, so don't do too much to it. But I kind of looked at the soil mix and went, mm, maybe it's a bit too wet. I think they were expecting the event space to maybe a bit warmer than it was, and it really wasn't drying out. I then moved it into a different soil media. I think I moved it into semi-hydro. <laughs> it did not like it. It kind of died to death, basically. And the other one is another anthurium, and it's the micro something microsorum, potentially. I'll add it at the top there. That one was doing well up until I came into this space, and I kept it in the same location that it was previously, but obviously it was getting a lot less light at the moment. There's some light damage, there was a point where there was a whole bunch of spider mites on that one that I hadn't realized, so that one's on the struggle bus. However, it is doing well, so there is something to be said. Interestingly enough, 
this plant that I'm holding in front of me, which might not look like an awful lot right now, is the one out of all of them that really hasn't skipped much of a beat. But let's look into the more specifics about how that was the case. So coming into speed of growth for this one, uh, <laughs> speed of growth is going to be the one thing that if you've ever had anybody who has owned a Luxuriance, I have never owned one of the hybrids, one of the Luxuriance hybrids, so I don't know. I would assume with a lot of the Luxuriance hybrids, they might be faster because of the other kind of crossed with parent. But let me bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see those absolutely stunning textured leaves. It's a great time as well because I've got a new leaf coming in at the moment. You can see that was one of the other leaves that I got. There was a tiny bit of edema that happened at the bottom. And this leaf here and this leaf here were some of the original leaves. I think I lost a couple of the smaller leaves, but they were sacrificed to make space for bigger leaves. So I'm all right with that. But yeah, I think anybody who's owned a Luxuriance, based on what I am also hearing online, this is not just my thing, this isn't going to be one of your fastest growing anthuriums, not even by a long shot. And generally I find that most anthuriums aren't particularly fast, generally. If you compare them to a lot of the philodendrons, not all of them, but they are a bit slower anyway. And this one is one of the slower, I don't know if it is one of the slowest actually and theorems that I've got in my collection, but it's definitely not fast. So it's an interesting one, basically. So with this one, I would say, and I'll give the benchmark that I usually do with these videos is, if in this space, during now the warm months, the growing period, a golden pothos, for instance, might bring out two or three new leaves in a month. This one might bring out a new leaf every month and a half. So I'm pretty sure this finished hardening off about a month ago and we're at this stage now with this. So it is slightly speeding up. I'll talk about the kind of media that I'm growing it in a, in a bit, basically. I've still got the original tag with the original price. <laughs> but yeah, it is it is a plant that can be quite slow growing. So as long as you know that going in, I think you should be okay. The one thing I do need to show you, because I don't think a lot of people talk about this, and hopefully it's going to come up if I close, if I kind of hide my face. Can you see the petiole itself? So the petiole is really interesting. It's almost square. It's not quite fully square. I think it might be uh, six-sided or seven-sided. I don't know. But um, there's some really cool ruffling that happens. Let me see if I can kind of hide my face so you might be able to see where that is joining there. Hopefully that's coming up a slight amount, possibly. I'll see if not, then I can always add a little clip there. There's a bit of ruffling that happens where the petiole joins the leaves, which is really, really cool. And this is actually quite good for you to see when the new leaf is coming in. This is now slightly going towards green, but when it comes in, I don't know if I've got a picture. If I do, I'll, I'll put it on here as well. But this is like bright red when it comes in. So that's really, really cool. So ease of propagation with this one, and I'm going to be completely transparent. I have not propagated this yet. However, I will say a few things. So there is an aerial root there that hopefully is coming up in the video. You might be able to see it right there. And I'll see if I can move it around. Um, but I wouldn't imagine this is particularly difficult to take a cutting from in order to propagate it. Whether or not this is an anthurium that pups easily, I don't know, it has not pupped for me, but it is one that I would imagine the cuts are quite clean. I mean, the, the internodal space can be a bit tight with this, but also at the same time, I think I'm giving this just the right amount of light that it needs, so it's not stretching and etiolating too, too much. I would imagine if you've got it somewhere where it's got slightly lower light conditions, then you would probably get it stretching a bit more and you might get an easier space to make that cut. Has this bloomed for me yet? No. And I would imagine, again, touching on what I was talking about before in terms of the speed of growth, this is quite a slow growing plant. And I have seen a lot 
larger and more substantial luxuriances out there. I would imagine when they're at that size, it might still take them a beat before they bloom to potentially pollinate and all of these things. So there is that to bear in mind. I don't think I'm anywhere near getting blooms on this in case I wanted to pollinate it. So there is that, but I would imagine it's very similar to most other anthuriums with how you would probably propagate this. So coming into availability for this one, I don't know whether or not you're going to be able to see the price there. Possibly, you might. I might need to flip it around. 170 great British pounds for this one. And I'll bring up the picture again so you can see quite how small it was. That's the prices that they were going for before. Now, do I think that the prices have come down? Yes. Do I think the prices have come down considerably from that price, especially for the size of plant that I was getting? Probably not. And again, it's the, I think predominantly because, I mean, there was a lot of demand for this plant for a long period of time. It was a plant that a lot of the Anthurium fanatics, if they've got a like decent Anthurium collection, they wanted to pick it up, but there wasn't that much of it around. Also, Again, touching on what I was just talking about before, about the speed, this isn't probably the fastest Anthurium, so it probably took a while for that supply to catch up with that demand because these things are slow, and I would imagine they're slow to propagate as well, which would mean that even though there is a high demand, it would take a while before the market had enough to provide to everybody. Which means that, again, as I said, I think these plants, I'm still seeing some mature forms of these, so probably bigger than mine, probably close to the price that I paid for, or just under that. Smaller plants, much more juvenile plants like this one would have been, I think now a year later, you can get it for cheaper. I think you can definitely get it in the double digits. Last time I checked, at least, from what I could see. So there is that to be said. But again, it's always the case with these things that, if you want to wait for a bit, you'll probably get it for a bit cheaper. The only caveat I would give specifically for this one is that speed element. Because, and we've talked about this on my other videos, is like if you, if you have the patience and you can wait, a lot of these plants, if it's a few months or a few years, the price will eventually come down. If you want to do it with this one, I would probably assume it's probably going to be another year, year and a half before it drops considerably. Because yes, some of the demand has dropped down now, but it's that speed. It's that speed that's always going to be an issue with something like a Luxurians. And that is the only caveat when I always say, you know what, you can wait if you don't have a lot of budget and get it a bit later on because the, the price will drop. I'll give you a very specific couple of examples. So the Adansonii, the variegated ones, <laughs> or even um, the Raphidophora tetrasperma, the variegated ones. Both of those plants, the non-variegated plants, grow like weeds. So at some point or another, speed isn't an issue there. They could probably, they probably propagate a bit slower than their green kind of relatives, but it's still fast growing plants. So those were always going to come down in price quite, quite quickly. Things like this that take time, you would imagine it would probably take a bit longer. So coming into pests with this one, and it's a really, really interesting one. And I don't think I've got any at the moment. It's really annoying because I didn't think when I was starting to film, I saw two pests on this and I removed them before I filmed it. I was like, oh, I should have just left them on there so you could see what I meant. But the predominant pest that I would say that I've had on this is mealybugs. And has it really done a lot of damage? No, because actually, and I don't know whether or not you might be able to put it close to my microphone. I don't know if you can hear that. That's me tapping on the leaf. These are thick leaves. These are very thick leaves. And they are kind of smooth, kind of leathery feel leaves. So it's really hard after it's hardened off. So that is the big thing to remember with this. It's the case with most anthuriums, actually, I found. The damage that you will get on most anthurium leaves is when they're at their most vulnerable, which is that kind of soft growing phase. And I don't know whether or not you might be able to see this and hopefully it's being picked up. If not, I'll see if I can add a little clip. This newest Queen Anthurium leaf, the Anthurium moraquanum, 
has got quite a lot of speckling that has happened on there. I didn't realize that there was spider mites inside the leaf before it even started unfurling. And anybody who's got a queen anthurium knows that they can be a bit sensitive. If you touch their leaves, they mark up exceptionally easily. I find that true to be fair with most anthuriums, not just this one. But yeah, and unfortunately all of that damage had already been done before it had even started getting large. It was, the leaf was only about this big when that damage was there. Got rid of the pests, but the damage will forever be on that leaf, which is why I'm quite impressed that this leaf got through unscathed. Don't know. But yeah, so the big pests on this, I would say obviously mealybugs, because again, nooks and crannies for days. Um, I don't think I've ever had anything like spider mites. I'm trying to think. Maybe once, maybe last year. So spider mites are another thing, again, because of the nooks and crannies, but it's more likely to be on something like a new leaf. Oh, actually, there is a tiny pest. I don't know whether or not you might be able to see it. It's in one of these grooves there at the very, very tip. Don't know whether or not the camera is going to pick it up. You can see a fleck, white fleck there. That's a mealybug. That's a baby mealybug. Two, there's one on the other side as well. It's a matchy, matchy set of mealybugs. But the other place as well that I would always say to check your anthuriums, and specifically this one, is right there in the kind of ditch between the petiole and the leaf. That is a place where they would like to kind of hide. Touch wood, I have never had thrips on this plant. And because it is that slightly harder leaf, again, this is kind of where things start getting quite repetitive in terms of pests. So things that are velvety, things that are very thin, will generally get spider mites, I find in my experience. Things that are very, very thick, not the thin ones, will usually be much more attractive to thrips. And I would imagine it's probably because of the way that thrips kind of life cycle and how they <laughs> hide the eggs within the leaf. So they'll dig the leaf surface and just basically, I think as far as I can tell, inject the the larva or the kind of egg into the leaf itself and the larva will eat itself out of the leaf which is why sometimes you get those speckles when you're looking at thrip damage is because that larva is coming out which is another reason specifically with thrips why you want to be kind of dealing with the pests every couple of weeks for at least a month or two. It's, it's a long period because if you've got an adult that has laid in the eggs, they might take up to two weeks to kind of come through. You've dealt with it then, but then if there's reinfection that has happened, you need to keep on top of that as well because it might look like you've got rid of the pest because you really cannot see the larva that is in the egg until I'm pretty sure they hatch and eat their way out of the leaves and then you can see the damage. And obviously then you can see the larval little kind of wormy thrips on the leaves and it's a lot more obvious at that point, but there's damage already happening within the leaf. So you definitely want to stay on top of that. So I don't think touch wood, I've had any issues with this. I have had thrips this summer in here and I am currently dealing with them. That's going well again, touch wood. Um, it's bizarre because for years, two years in here, I've only ever really had mealybugs. This year I've had less mealybugs since coming into the new conservatory because I dealt with a lot of the mealybugs before they came in here. But this year I'm getting more thrips <laughs> and spider mites. And this is the first year that I can honestly say the thrip situation isn't stressing me out too much, basically. And I have to say it's because of the thrip satchels, the predator insects that I got this year from Dragonfly. So far they have been spectacular. But yeah, way off topic with this one, but it's, it's a chat about pests with this one. But generally, actually, I will say with this one, not too bad when it comes to pests, but very little damage is ever really done from the pests. So that's something to bear in mind. All right, and coming into accessories and care with this one. So no janky support stick, none is needed. It's very, very upright and it's very turgid. But for the eagle-eyed and apologies for how mucky my pot looks, but it is in semi-hydro. And I think this might've been one of the last plants that I potted in pon rather than the Soil Ninja semi-hydro mix. It is in pon, so it's a bit smaller. It's not like the coarse one. Could I have got away with the coarse mix? Yes. This one also, I did the transition with quite nicely. 
it's a thirsty plant, I find. So this one moved from just regular watering through semi-hydro without a reservoir into a reservoir quite quickly, but it was towards the end of the growing season that I got it last year, so there is that. It didn't really miss much of a beat, it didn't get a huge amount of light, probably medium, bright and direct towards medium light, and this one was very happy. It is now further down on one of my shelves, which is only really getting an LED strip worth of lighting. Obviously there's ambient lighting that's coming in from above the conservatory now in the summer, but this is also one of those plants that tends to grow okay in the winter. It's not one of those anthuriums, because I've got anthuriums that pretty much almost go dormant in terms of leaf production during the winter, where they might even lose most of their leaves and just leave one. This is one that still keeps on trucking on. But other than that, and the thirstiness is something that I will say, so I'll give you context now. This is in a very small pot for its size, but again, you will pot your plants up in terms of their root mass, not their leaf mass. And this has got, uh, and you can see from the salt deposits, this has usually got a reservoir, and that reservoir is currently being filled, watered and filled every five days in the summer. So does this probably need a repot sometime soon? Yes, will that probably be sometime next year? Probably, because I find a lot of the times my plants, you've seen me, the pot sizes are quite small and they tend to be a bit happier, basically. Again, overwater, even with the semi-hydro situation, so that's just the me thing. But yeah, I think that's everything about accessories and care. It's not a particularly tricky plant, I will say. For an anthurium, it's okay. Right. Coming into final thoughts for this one, I'll put it down because I always say this in my videos, heavy, <laughs> heavy. So let's start the way that I usually start. Knowing what I know now about this plant, if I didn't have it, would I get this? Yes, but there's a caveat, and I should have mentioned this actually in availability. I would have held off, had a bit more budget, and got the slightly larger plant, mainly because I'm impatient. So there is that. If you're a very patient person and you, you thrive on slower plants and watching them truly come into their own and flourish, go for it. If you want to get it to a stage where it's quite showy and quite impressive off the bat, I would say maybe keep your money, build up some of that kind of saving up for it a bit more and go for a slightly larger plant if you can. That would be my advice. So I would definitely get this plant again. Still brings me an awful lot of joy. And even for how impatient I am, this is still a cool, cool plant. But yeah, I would have probably spent a bit more and got a larger plant to begin with. The other thing that I will say is because of quite how turgid this plant is. It's going to be a new word for this channel. It's up there with the janky supports it. It's turgid. Uh, I don't have another way of describing something that's even turgid. <laughs> it is that this plant, I don't know whether or not it would ship well. I would imagine this is quite snappy. It's very, very stiff leaves and very, very stiff petioles. So I don't know. If you've got one in the mail and you've ordered it online, how did it arrive? I'm really, really curious, basically. But yeah. So that's that bit out of the way. Then coming into score, so from zero, one being the worst, or 10 being the best, where would I judge this? So I'll give this two scores. So as a house plant overall, in terms of how easy it is, in terms of how impressive these like dinosaur looking leaves are, I would say I would give this a solid seven or an eight. In terms of an anthurium, I'm not actually trying to think if this is going to be a different score. No, it's probably going to be about the same, but for different reasons. So the anthurium are probably going to take off some scores because of how slow it can be. It's an anthurium, which is why I'm not giving it a much, much higher score, because there is a tiny bit of a learning curve. So if you've, done, if you've dealt with a couple of anthuriums before, this is an okay one, I think, to kind of progress onto. But... So if, you've, if you're used to like prima donna type anthuriums, this isn't really going to cause you much of an issue at all. And to be fair, even if you've only ever really dealt with a 
clarinurium and maybe a crystallinum, you should probably be okay with it, I think. The only thing that I will say, and a bit of a caveat here, is I've only ever grown it in this space, which means that it gets a decent level of humidity most of the time. Looking at how thick those leaves are and the way that the plant is, and as long as you are keeping it evenly moist, I hate that, but semi-hydro is your friend with anthuriums. I have said this and I will die on that rock, basically. But I don't imagine this would need an awful lot of humidity. I don't know. Is anybody out there, has anybody out there got this plant and is growing it in regular household humidity? And if so, any issues? But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about truly, I would say one of one of my favorite anthuriums, even though they didn't give it a huge, huge score. For an anthurium, I think that is a good score. I've only, as I said, just had it shy of a year, but I'm still massively enjoying watching this grow up, essentially. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.